Hey everyone, welcome to a new workflow tutorial. This time I'll be focusing on mocap and I'll be showing you how Ragdoll can help you make changes easier and much faster, get iterations, new versions within minutes. This time I'll be focusing on adding weight to a piece of mocap that I have. Let me show you how. So what we have here is our rig. Our Iron Giant rig. I love that character so I decided to play with it. Add a symbol walk and my goal here is to make that walk look as heavy as possible. Let's play it. Let's play that basic mocap applied to this rig. Alright? A really really simple walk cycle. Applied to a giant. Let's let's watch this from front view. I notice shoulders and the amount of rotations here. The amount of change in the upper body. See that? To me, this looks light. So my goal here was to make this look much heavier. And here where Ragdoll comes in. The way to achieve that is by using two attributes I'll be talking about today. That's one way of making change to your mocap data. But before we dive into Ragdoll and making those changes, let me show the end result, what we're going for. So I'll just show our Ragdoll rig. Go back to frame one. And let's play this. Focus on the arms. See the difference? Alright. Now let's watch that again, but from front view. And now focus on the on the upper body. Why? Because for this for this tutorial I focused just on the upper body. Arms, chest, neck, head, that's it. Let's play that again. Let's show our ragdoll rig and play. In black, that's our original rig, and of course those are the markers we have, shapes of our ragdoll rig. Now when you talk about making something look heavier in animation, you need to make changes to timing and poses. For this tutorial I'll be focusing just on making timing changes, how you can use ragdoll to make timing and of course part of that spacing changes to your animation to your mocap data to make something look much heavier how can we do that let's find out I'll be selecting I'll start by selecting this our manipulator I'll select this base or this first marker that we have from our ragdoll rig why because you know in animation there's a parent and a child and you should focus on the parent for example if you're animating a bipod like this you focus on the hips you make sure that the parent or the center of gravity or the the lead works the way you want to because that affects the child right so here I'll start by adjusting this to make it look heavier and to me to make it look heavier that means to reduce its changes like to have it uh, rotate less and to change its spacing changing its spacing meaning what I have in mind is to have this effect that you have on you that you see when you when you when you watch a, a heavy object move heavier objects take longer to start moving and longer to stop that translates to more slow out of your pose and more slow end to a pose. How can you achieve such effect using Ragdoll? More slow out, more slow end, and instead, normally you would do this by adding an atom layer and taking your keys, def defining your extremes, and expanding those or increasing that slow out and slow end into each pose. That's what you would do as an animator. You would add an atom layer, work with those keys to increase that. And now that if you if you start doing that, you're working with your spacing, you haven't changed any poses, okay? That 
can be done using Ragdoll by working with those two attributes. If you go here, you will see something called Rotate Stiffness and Rotate Damping. What is Rotate Stiffness and Damping? If you understand those two, you will gain that power, that control over this. Rotate Stiffness is where Ragdoll, the value here, represents what Ragdoll is doing. Ragdoll is trying to get to that space, that point in space, where you have from your original mocap, your motion, okay, as close as possible. It tries to reach that point in space every single frame. So the higher the value you have at rotate stiffness, the more you will see your uh, markers try to stay as close as possible to your mocap, for example, since we're working with mocap now. Now, rotate damping does something different. Uh, before I move to rotate damping, let me just explain this again. Rotate stiffness, the higher the value, you're, you're staying closer to the values you have from your original motion. You're staying, you're trying, Ragdoll is trying to get to those points in space every single frame. That means if you lower your value, rotate stiffness, Ragdoll is no longer trying to hit that exact point in space for that locator in every frame. It's kind of loosening your locators, okay? You're adding that looseness to it. That's why you can see here that I have this rotate stiffness to 0.1. Be careful, when you play with those values, tiny changes, like if I change this to 0.2, you will see not noticeable difference. Now let's move to rotate damping before we start playing with those uh, attributes. Let's move and explain to rotate damping. Stiffness gets your markers to be loose. Okay? What about dampening? Dampening is like adding that slow out and slow in. That's the amount to slow out, slow in to your uh, motion. So if you're going from point A to point B, rotate dampening affects how slow out and slow in you go out from A you go into B and this works on every frame so let's suppose you have 10 extremes here rotate dampening the higher the value you're giving yourself bigger slow outs bigger slow ends which is what we want if you take that value down and when I say down when I say more or, or less the base here or the default is 1 okay if you go below 1 below a value of 1, you're having less, less slow out, less slow in. If you go higher, you're getting more of that, okay? So let's put that into practice, okay?